Hello, I'm Ari. And I'm Claudine. Welcome to Proving the Negative. We're a podcast all about exploring the different sides of cybersecurity, from political science to computer science, international relations to mathematics. Join us as we talk to our friends about the work they do. How's it going, Ari? I'm very excited to hear our, our top five moments. Let's go. Annie Rude, Claudia, Harmony, Sean, Mary. I'm going to kick off with Annie Rude. Digital resilience means children have the tools mentally as well as some digital tools to cope with the challenges that they're facing. Plugins for the browser and some add-ons for your phone which can prevent data sharing. The mental tools are important as well. If you do find out that your photo has appeared online which you didn't want, how do you cope with that? We taught children how to navigate the physical world. Now we have to teach them, okay, how do we navigate this this digital world? Long-term consequences require some intensive research. A child growing up using Facebook, what are the consequences once a child has become an adult? How does this person engage with other people? How does it impact their relationship with their kids or with, with the people around them? In this clip, what I particularly enjoyed was the way Anirudh talks about long-term impacts and how they exist, but we don't necessarily know what they are. Neither do we have structure in place to, to, to map that out. So, for example, big social media platforms have all the data, researchers don't necessarily, and because there's no conversation happening there, we're missing out on a lot of insights that we could get. I particularly like the sort of zooming out that he did, because he, he went into detail about his research. He did also pull out, broadly speaking, here are the big picture concerns. Particularly because kids are a vulnerable population. Part of security work is understanding how do you protect people from harm. And I'll add kids into that little pool of potential groups of vulnerable people. And also the fact that we're not just thinking about some of the consequences of our current infrastructure in terms of how they might harm users, but what those harms might be. I love that. The long-term, long-term view. Next up, Claudia's interview. What I particularly liked, and I think this is purely just because I thought it was cool, was just how she described her research process. So just listen to the clip here. So we assume that the attacker had a video footage. Someone recorded for the attacker, or in some way, the attacker got access to a video recording of the local camera, for instance, when the user was interacting with the smart environment, smart devices. And then we allowed our participants, uh, who are attackers, who are in the attacking group, to watch the video and then try to mimic the behavior of the of the victim um, they saw on the on the video footage. In person observation, let's imagine smart office environment. You have a lot of colleagues, but you have a manager who can do certain things you can't, or uh, you want access to smart printer history of another user. So you are a malicious colleague. So you want to use the privileges of someone else. First of all, the research design. In this case, they specifically made an effort to go into a real work environment. Very neat and novel and innovative in the way that they deployed it. Particularly where the sensors kept popping off the walls. Yeah. And they're like, why are we getting these weird... Re- oh! Yeah, where, where they, they dealt with the real world problems. They only found out that the sensors were popping off because they asked. Yeah. And, you know, if they, if they hadn't bothered to listen to the people in their houses, they would never have known and just said, oh, smart homes are just weird. Look at this weird data. People are weird. People are weird. All right, let me take you through my second snippet. This is Harmony from last week's conference. There is a tendency of seeing security as a positive, which it usually is. I would agree with that, but sort of uncritically and and resilience as a positive, but uncritically, for example. I've had many conversations here. I've asked people, do you, do you see that the difference between security and resilience is actually also a political difference, right? Security is the state's responsibility and a company's responsibility to make sure that people are secure. Resilience, it is the person's responsibility to be resilient. There's a shift of responsibility that happens there. These are important questions because they have important legal and political implications in the lives of ordinary people. This interview rocked my world because at a cybersecurity conference, here we had someone saying, you know, there's more to life. I particularly enjoyed the idea that security is the responsibility of the people with the power. And again, Annie Wood actually does talk about being resilient. He talks about how right, yeah. we can equip kids to have digital resilience. If their pictures are shared without their permission, how do they deal with that? How do they you know, keep living their life despite things happening? Resilience is an interesting one. I tend to view it from a slightly different angle. It's very easy to slide into the idea that 
well, the users are responsible for themselves. It's not the platform's responsibility. It's not the government's responsibility to protect users. If the users don't have means to be resilient, it's an impossible goal, which I think is kind of where we are at the moment. I would like to talk about Sean. I think cybersecurity has to revolve around the notion of information technology. At the moment, what most of us are talking about is, is computers. Whether you want to introduce books and things into that notion, I think you can. Cybersecurity is more than just computer security or computer science. It's again about taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture. When we're talking about security, we are, of course, trying to secure computers. But the reason we're trying to secure these computers is because they mean something to human beings. And that's why cybersecurity is absolutely inseparable from the social and psychological aspect of it. Ultimately, it's human beings who value these devices and it's human beings who use these devices. And we have to learn not just about human behavior and not just about device behavior, but the interaction between the two. First of all, one of the things I loved about Sean's interview overall was the use of math. I find it fascinating because I don't do math and I don't really understand It's math. another language. It's another language. It's really interesting to hear it applied in such a real and very specific and relatable context. Trust and reputation online. It was very inclusive, mm. I think. And that was what I liked about it because we tend to get bogged down in very specific definitions of cybersecurity around being about systems and information and infrastructure and not necessarily accounting for the human element as much as we should. Sean does maths. Sean, great words. Yeah. Sean, Sean, do words good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to talk about... Oh, no, we're going to talk about Mary. Talk about Mary. There is something about Mary. When it landed, it almost immediately started sending Twitter updates. Now, I know that that was probably, in this instance, a human typing at NASA and not the actual robot on Mars. But having said that, it got me thinking about the fact that Going into space, probably, in fact, we already are going to be sending robots ahead of us. Alexa is a robot. And I wondered, well, what would the place be for speech technology in that? Could we train a robot to describe to us the things that it finds? How would we make those communications coming, coming back to us from the robot secure, I suppose? The way we selected these moments, we did not talk to each other. We did not. Until, mm -mm. until right before we started recording. I wish we had a deeper explanation for this, but also robots in space. As a field, generally, we're starting to think about cybersecurity in space. In the last episode, the soundbite was, we get there together or not at all. Everyone does something, and that all counts. There's a really great Swiss cheese analogy. Instead of just one protective layer that might have holes in, you have multiple layers. And each has holes, but in different places. So eventually, you, you're more protected because you've got more coverage, more more barriers in the way of bad things happening. Security is useless if it is not relevant and if it's not useful. Yeah. Because what tends to happen is the hackers aren't just baddies who try and get into your systems. People create their own hacks to get around things that are bothering them or getting in the way. Yeah. So that that's another thing we've been talking about, which is... And accessibility. It has to be accessible as well. Agreed. As a parting gift for anyone listening, how can they think about security in their own way. Security by design. If you're designing a project which you think has no particular security implications, there are almost always security implications. Think about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. How safe and secret do you want your data or whatever it is that you have that you need protecting? Integrity, how do we make sure nobody messes with this and we make sure it's correct as much as possible? And availability, how do we make sure that people who need to access what they need to access, can do that. The idea is not to scare people. Just be mindful that cybersecurity is something that you should keep in your mind when you're doing anything online or when you're using any kind of technology. It shouldn't take over your life. It shouldn't be something that makes you scared, but it should be something that you bear in mind. What are you doing next, Claudine? I'm doing more research. <laughs> and uh, I will have to figure out what to do next. And that is future Claudine's problem. Ari, where are you going? What are you doing? More cybersecurity, yeah. because I just can't get enough. I am going to America. A few thank yous before we sign off. Big thanks to the Center for Doctoral Training in Cybersecurity at University of Oxford. Thank you to everybody who participated, talked to us, answered emails. A big thank you to you for listening. It's really great to have you. That is all we have time for today and forevermore. So thanks for listening. We hope you've enjoyed proving the negative swanning about in cybersecurity. Goodbye. You can tweet at us at hellopttnpod 
And you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. The title there is PTN Pod. This has been a podcast from the Center for Doctoral Training in Cybersecurity at the University of Oxford, funded by the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council.